After an unprecedented string of defeats in an attempt to become the next speaker of the House, our first guest tonight has decided to return to his true calling, television comedy. His new show is called Animal Control. It premieres February 16th on Fox. Please welcome Joel McHale. <laughs> That was just how Nancy Pelosi was yes. planning to come out. I feel like a powerful 82-year-old woman from San Francisco. <laughs> I think the hair is backing that up. Yeah, what's going on with your hair? Transplants have come in, Jimmy. <laughs> I am no longer a bald man. I feel great. I feel like John Stamos. I don't even know what to make of that. Is it just a different haircut or what's happening Yeah, here? I decided uh, with all the rain here, I'm like, I'm not gonna use any product. And pe people are like, you can't do that. I'm like, I am. I'm taking a risk. It's Can great. I tell you something? It Post reminds me like uh, like our son Billy, who's five, was was sick the, uh, the earlier this week. It reminds you of your son when he was sick? Mm -hmm. you, right. See, you look like a sick five-year-old. <laughs> You're like, yeah. hey, barbershop, do the sick five-year-old on this you know one, yeah. Is. You know, they're like kind of sick and they're kind of extra cute because they're sick and their hair is a little bit messy. That's what you look like. Oh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Kind of. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I, I just, I feel like it's always combed back. So I thought, yeah. I know I'll, I'll get from my wife on it, so. Yeah, well, we spent much too much time, and I apologize for no, that. No, I don't want to talk about anything else. <laughs> Nothing, except for that guy's haircut right there. Uh, You've been following the, like, what's going on in the House of Representatives? Is that on your radar? Nope. No. Uh, no, yeah, no, I love it so much. Oh, you do? It's like the most boring version of, uh, I, like, you know, like Groundhog's Day I've ever seen. I'm like, yeah. we're doing this again and uh, I the the he's like the guy, the fact that we just keep on voting over and over is I thought oh it's like when I was in an arcade when I was 11 and I was about to go play defender and then the like the frat boy showed up with $40 worth of quarters and put them all up and he's like I'm gonna beat this thing <laughs> if it takes two days and, uh, <laughs> and now it's day four so I I can't and no defender for you yeah. No, so yeah, I, it was very. Uh, well, it seemed I played like Stargate it, instead. Which was sorry, the same yeah. thing as Defender. <laughs> no one knows what I'm talking about right now. You're, ask your grandparents what Defender was. We used You've to go to a, shops. Did you ever go to an arcade when you were a kid? Many times. Yeah, we even had an arcade that took nickels in my neighborhood. And it wasn't that I was born in the 20s or anything like that. It just, they had the old arcade games that you already had on Atari, you know? Wait, so Space Invaders cost. A, a nickel. nickel? Yeah, it's called Nickelodeon. Yeah, which then. <laughs> not, in the 80s, you only. Joke. Get... Yeah. It was that... in Las Vegas. You know, in Las Vegas, people put a premium on putting quarters into machines. Yeah. And if you get nothing out of them, people are mad. So you have to just charge a nickel. That's amazing. Did you ever make any money off of them? Like, uh, did ever. They don't pay out. No, Pac Man doesn't give you any money. He just. <laughs> Too bad. Just eats the ghost and then you go home. Yeah. I remember when the first time I went to Las Vegas was when I was a teenager on a basketball tournament. I am not kidding. And my friend snuck us in and we started playing poker. And I watched an old lady with a huge thing of quarters pass out, no joke, because she was so happy. And then she woke up and began pulling the quarters back to her and uh, putting them in the cup. And my friend looked down and he was like, she's fine. And, uh, and I was like, wow, Las Vegas, is, yeah. this is, it's just like Seattle. <laughs> I've lived in both of this those places. This was not part of the pre-interview no. at all. No, in fact. Yeah, Jimmy lived in Seattle, and you know why he moved away, you guys? He was afraid that Mount Rainier was gonna erupt. <laughs> that is true, that's right? That's what you remember, huh? That, I couldn't. Well, no, that's not why I moved. I moved because I was fired from that job, as oh. I was from many jobs. <laughs> But you are absolutely correct in that every time I looked at Mount Rainier, I thought, that's an active volcano and it's gonna get us one of these days. <laughs> but you've moved here and we're like, yeah, earthquakes don't really happen here. You can't, you can't, you can't see the faults, so. You can't, that's right. You can't see the earthquake, but when you look at the, it's a physical, it's like a threat. It's like, and not only that, because it's kind of arrogant to just move to Seattle and be like, 
Yeah, I see you. I'm still living here. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh. Uh, I, I, I've never thought, I always thought with a volcano, I, when I saw that volcano, I was like, I'll have time to get away. <laughs> uh, right? I mean, the volcano, it's not, there's going to be a couple of warnings. Yes. By the way, you've been shooting up in Vancouver, I know, which is two hours north of Seattle. Yeah, uh, I'm shooting a thing in Vancouver in uh, Canada, which is a country yeah. just north, just north of here. My mom's Canadian, so uh, go Canucks. Uh, kidding, go Kraken. So does that kidding, mean go you kids. can go in back and forth as you please since your mother's Canadian? No. No. Uh, they didn't buy my citizenship, so. Oh. Uh, no, uh, I, yes, so I was work. I am working there right now. It's one of the lovelier cities on the planet, and uh, I was trying to get to Seattle where I am, grew up to go to the uh, Christmas holidays, and I missed my plane because we worked late, and so I thought I'll take an Uber, and, uh, and it said 220 bucks to get to Seattle, and you know, Canadian dollars, that's like eight bucks. And uh, <laughs> the guy, as soon as I got in, he was like, yeah, I can't go over the border. And I was like, are you a criminal? And, because that'll be a great story. And he said, no, because if I go into America, then that means I'll be working in America, and then I'll be in trouble. And I was like, that makes no sense at all, but just get me to the border where then he told me cancer could be cured with breathing. And- uh, it was, Did he really? Yeah, I had a whole hour and a half. I was like, tell me more. And <laughs> I'm being cured right now. And, uh, and then he was like, there's lots of Ubers on the other side. And then it became Fargo. It, oh. it, was, it was snowing and there was nobody there. There were no Ubers on there the other side. There was others. no Ubers. There was hardly any guards. They were like, just, there it is. Oh, that, you brought a video. So I walked into Blaine, Washington with my luggage. Uh, there was a lot of, a lot of, my penis was frozen. I just left it on the ground. I, uh, I met a guy named John from Victoria. We, we did Where'd a, you meet John? We met in the wheelhouse bar. Uh, <laughs> really? Where a very drunk man said, uh, I'll take you guys. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. And then he said, <laughs> For real, he said, well, I'll go, I'm going to go home and masturbate then. And, and I was like, I bet that won't even happen. And, uh, then we took a two-hour, we, they were like, we can get you as far as Bellingham, which is about an hour or less than an hour away. You and John? Me and John were in, the, in a cab. We, watched a, we were, watched a drug deal go down. What? And so we got some great fentanyl. And uh, uh, it was per, uh, perfectly cut. And uh, John and I fell in love. And... Uh, <laughs> I left Sarah. There's John, and uh, oh, that, uh, he's oh, that that's guy. John. And he's a big hunter, big fisherman in Wisconsin from uh, from Canada. And now we were we've been texting. He's going to be very excited. Oh, really? Yeah, this is he's like, a great guy. You would love him. I'm this not is like kidding. planes, trains, and automobiles. Yes, and my hand was in between his uh, butt at yeah. one point. Uh, <laughs> those aren't pillows, and um, we, it was it worked out great. So. Let's take a break. We'll maybe get some moose on you, and we'll be right back with no, Joel McHale. His new show. Oh. Holy crap! It's huge. Frank, have you ever dealt with something like this before? No, and I can't tell you how much, but something that's not nothing just slipped out of me into my underwear. It's getting tighter. Just remain calm. We're gonna unwind it from you, Shred. Grab the head. I'm not grabbing the head, man. It's scary and gross. Seahawks have a very shallow depth charge. Now grab the head. I'm not touching that thing. I was led to believe this job was mostly dog. Help him! We're back with Joe McHale. Wow. That is his new show, Animal Control. It premieres February 16th on Fox. Yes. You play uh, an ex-cop who is now an animal control officer. Yeah. Yep. Does yep. that happen? Is that, do people make that transition? I feel like we're telling a story that you've heard a thousand times. <laughs> and Joseph Campbell <laughs> references it. Uh, I don't know, and you, I don't care. You don't uh, care, yeah. Uh, but there are, animal control is real. And yeah, uh, sure. it is, they really go after, I mean, you can call, if you, here in California, removing you know, raccoons and coyotes or snakes. Uh, that was a uh, Burmese python. And I was like, is that, could it kill me? And they're like, an African rock python would kill you in five minutes, but this is fine, it ate two weeks ago. So, uh, but the, ca the cast is dynamite. Yeah, they who's are, in the cast? Uh, Michael Rowland, that was him, uh, who was just uh, there, uh, and uh, Grace Palmer. I, I can't go all- uh, uh, You can't remember Ravi their Patel, names? Patel, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can keep going. Um, but uh, they're all really uh, funny folks, and uh, I, they're way more talented than I am, much younger. And you enjoy working with the animals? 
I love it. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with it. Well, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Guillermo. Guillermo, come on. Guillermo, what, you really ran away from That's Joel's co-star right there. Yeah, this is oh. my assistant. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, so. How oh, this is Whiskers. Go? Oh, Whiskers. And if I'm, I'll, yeah, here, I'll get him. Sorry. Guillermo, do you want to help with this? Yeah, no, dude. thank you, Jimmy. You don't? No. OK. <laughs> I pass. No, I, Hi, Whiskers. How are you? Whiskers, um, you know, the thing about these snakes is, Here, is like, as if they're not scary enough, they have red eyes like the devil, now, too. Have you touched a snake before? Yeah, I've touched a snake. Well, sure. go ahead and let's do it again. OK, there's no tricks that are going to happen? No, it feels like a, a, like a really nice. Okay, uh, it's, it's head's just... getting near my. Um, do they have? Well, do you these have to have... get near it. You have to touch it to get near it. Do these have fangs? I mean, to do, uh, they do have fangs. All snakes do, un unless you order them without fangs. If, it, if I'm right, I think if it's the right sex, uh, then it will have... I is don't that know. the end of the snake, or is that you? Uh, <laughs> that's, yes, right here. This part is frozen. Here's I the, touched it, yeah. Here's the, uh, here's the tail of the snake. You can see the little butt right there. I can't show you. Uh -huh. uh, is, right by the way, there. would we have to blur a snake's butthole out uh, if we were to show it here? Is, <laughs> see, now this is how they kill you, wow. There, there, I got it. There, this is uh, great. All right. And that's Guillermo, come on, this, come on over. Uh, this is. Sorry, but not. I, I'm not crazy about snakes, but Guillermo really isn't crazy about snakes. No, I'm afraid of snakes, no, no. I'll give you 100 bucks if you come over and touch it. No, no, no. This is... You know what I want to do? I want to graphically remove the snake from your body, and then we'll play you asking Guillermo to come over and say, I'll give you 100 bucks to touch it. I can't. Sorry, man. I'm a, very scary. No, no. How about 300 bucks? Uh, keep... <laughs> uh, no. $400. No. Well, by the way, you work with a monkey on Community, and you guys are working on a movie, right? Yeah, we are. We're working. Uh, we're making the Community movie in uh, June. So, wow! Thanks for remembering. Is the monkey in the Community movie? Chris, Crystal, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Crystal will be in there. It would be fun to feed the monkey to the snake, you know, just to show that you've moved on. I feel like the movie would take on a different tone. Yeah, maybe. If yeah. it started out with a well, uh, snake devouring a <laughs> beloved monkey. <laughs> Uh, I don't know and, what you guys and, have planned, but yeah. yeah. The name of the snake, uh, monkey was Annie's boobs. <laughs> yeah, no right, yeah, right, uh, Andy's boobs, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I can say Ken Jeong's going to be in it. it it's, he is in the, in the snake or in community? He's, I'm going to yeah. tell him exactly what that response was. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Jeong will be in it. Woo, you hear that, Ken? <laughs> Ken, did you hear that? <laughs> Well, it's great to have you here. Not so much the snake, but um, thank like... you for being with us. And uh, weirdly, Nancy Pelosi was also going to bring a big snake. Uh, <laughs> his name is Kevin McCarthy. But oh. uh... Uh, did you ever, you ever get worried? Like they've been there so many days in a row. I'm like, how many sport coats and white shirts and red ties do these people own? <laughs> It's, it's like uh, First Communion over and over and over. <laughs> Joel McHale, everybody. The show's out. called Animal Control. Watch it on Fox, February 16th. Thank you, Joel. We'll be back with Allie Wentworth.